Hi there folks and welcome to another C64 Sunday. I'm Zerfall and today we're going to be playing Alter Ego. I put it out on Twitter which game I should play this Sunday and um, Alter Ego ended up tied with Impossible Mission for what game we should play. So I put it up to Jaxors and I said what game do you think I should play this Sunday? She chose Alter Ego based on the name. She thought the name sounded better. So we're going to be playing Alter Ego. It was game number 46 at the time that uh, I locked in the top 100 list with a score of 8.52. Um, the score is still about the same on Lemon64. Uh, this game was created in 1985, and it was designed and written by Peter J. Favaro, PhD, who was a psychologist and uh, decided to get into the gaming industry and make this game that... Um, supposedly based on your ch your development as a child and everything uh, affects your life so you can go through and see what your life might have been like if you made different choices the programming was done by ec horvath and unimac incorporated and from what i can tell on lemon 64 all three of these things unimac incorporated uh, ec and peter this is the only game they worked on we're going to go ahead and begin a new game Oh, no, publish, published by Activision. We're going to begin a new game, and um, let's make our name Old Man Zerf. Because we're going to go ahead and let the computer select our personality, and then we're going to pick Old Age. Because I don't think in this video itself we're going to have enough time to go through the whole game uh, in one sitting just for the C64 Sunday. So we're going to go to Old Age right away, and we're just going to end the game and see what happens if you go to the end game right off the bat. In this final uh, section of life, there should be a symbol with a sun setting that will be our sun setting on life, I suppose. I don't know if it's going to say we're going into retirement or if it's going to say that we're dead, but we're going to press that button and see what happens. Um, So this is sort of like, oh, I got insert disk one, label side down. I thought I had it in. Oh, it has to be in drive one. See, I put four drives on here, hoping that it would uh, keep most of the games going here, but now I've got to fiddle around with discs. There's actually six disc sides. There's three discs, uh, and there's six disc sides total. Welcome to old age. It is not white hair that engenders wisdom. Um, and we are going to go in here, and like I said, uh, we don't know if we're married. Are we married? I don't think we are. Oh, it's got to load up and see. Welcome to the marriage icon. In order for this to enter this icon, you must be first involved in a steady relationship, which we don't seem to be. All right. Have an experience with your wife. Continue. You're not even married. All right. How do I just go back? There we go. All right. So, like I said, if we move up here, all these different symbols will be explained during the main course of the game, but... Eventually, if we make it through all these health hazards and whatnot, there is a sunset. And we can just click on that sunset and go on into the sunset, I suppose. After a long but very relaxing day, with a deep sigh, you climb into bed and sink into the warm, cushion, cushiony fabric. As you drift off, feeling, feelings of intense serenity and well-being overwhelm you. Pleasant images of childhood visit with sweet memories of mom and dad, school, and growing up. The memories flash by your mind's eye with startling reality. Or reality. The smell of school on your first day. The outfit you first, you know, of your very first girlfriend uh, were on your first date. You recall places you haven't visited for years and picture perfect details. Friends and neighbors who have gone on to greet, and greet you. They are filled with ex excitement to see you. Though you soon realize they are not communicating their joy with words. Everything seems so peaceful now. It's almost as if this will go on forever. <laughs> and that's the end of the game. Um, so let's uh, display our status and remind, ask us again. So we were old man Zerf. We made it to 66 with no occupation. We were single. Uh, we had not very much calmness. We were very expressive, although only 50%. 50% uh, intelligent. You can see you don't have all that many stats and nothing. It's not worth going to the last stage unless you're just looking to see what some of the experiences are. Because you don't have any money, you won't be able to do anything. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Let's see what 
happens. All right, so I've got to just do a little disk swap here real quick. Back to disk one side A. And there's a baby. I think it's just restarting the uh, game on us here by pressing continue. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't quite expect it to do it that way. So, I guess we have to start the new game right here, and it's uh, it's going to be helpful. So, well, no, I don't want to do it this way. I want to... Uh, i got to pick one of these. I've got to... I'm going to restart the game here in a second once I get the chance. And you know what? Turbo mode will help get that done a little faster. All right, so... Somewhere around here. Oh, maybe not. I thought somewhere around here would be able to just restart the game. But it seems that no. We're still Old Man Zerf. We have all the same stats. So let's go ahead and just hit restart on the system here. And we'll let this get into turbo mode because might as well get it loading quickly. Oh, here we go. So, as you can see, um, this is a hacked version of the game, but it should load up relatively quickly into the beginning again. It's all mainly text-based. I mean, there are spreads in the screen for um, the game area icons. Um, it's sort of an interesting little bit of game. Uh, C64 Games, back in 2010, gave this game a 7. Um, we're going to begin a new game again here. This time we're just going to be... Whoops. Unlike most games, you actually can put in capitals here. We're just going to be Zerf. And we're going to select our own personality. Um, Lemon64 gave this game 8.5 back in 2011. And it stayed around that since then. So it's, you know, that's the score people are giving it. 8.5. It's sticking around there. Um, probably answer these questions honestly. Um, false. I'm just going to have a little bit of fun with this. I like to speak, like that you to speak whatever comes to mind. True. I'm a light sleeper who stirs even the slightest sound. I'm going to put true anyways, even though I'm not really, just in case I wake up with revenge is sweet. Ah, uh, sure, why not? I often feel slow, tired, and down in the dumps. That's false. An important part of every job is knowing who to impress. Uh... I'd like to think that that's false, but I'm going to pick true for my character in this game. I'm fascinated by car accidents and other disaster scenes. I'm going to pick false, and that's false for me too. I'll, I really try not to look at those things. They disturb me. Um, unless there's something I can do to help, then I actually have gotten involved before. The people who know me best like me as a person. Sure. I'm extremely sensitive to criticisms. False. You can't be on the internet and feel like that. I'm nervous to perform in front of people, even when the task is something I know by heart. I'll put false for that, too, because I'm <laughs> doing that every single time I make a video, pretty much. People around me seem happier than me. Uh, I don't think that's true. When I see a wet paint sign, I always want to touch it to find out if it's really wet. <laughs> Let's put true for that. When I'm ill, I become short-tempered and slap by people. No, I just sleep. On important matters, I usually follow my parents' advice, even when I disagree with it. Hmm. Let's put false for that. Is it possible that we live... In a world where people watch our every move. Oh, let's be paranoid, sure. And when I'm in a quiet place, I get the urge to scream. Let's put true. Is it okay to tell a white lie if it's guaranteed to bring great personal gain? Uh, let's go with yes this time. It's often pointless to try to discuss problems with another person. I don't think that's true. Easily embarrassed. Once again, being on the internet, that can't be true. Children should be seen and not heard. Let's just say true for us so that maybe our kids in this game keep their yaps shut. I find it difficult to break the ice in conversations with people I barely know. Uh, let's put true. My parents were extremely strict disciplinarians. False! That way we can get away with murder. You can usually judge a person by first impressions. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, one way of getting people to treat you fairly is to take an aggressive stance and make them win you over. Sure, why not? I think questions like this are stupid and meaningless. Let's put true. Okay, and we'll begin the game. Now we're going to start in infancy. 
I find infancy isn't the most exciting stage, but it's the start of the game. We've seen the end of the game. Let's see the start too. So hopefully things don't load too long. And I think the infancy all takes place on the first disc, so that is helpful. Cultboy.com gave this game a 9.5. That was also back in 2010 uh, with a total of 14 bo points. Happy Computer gave it a 90. And Zap64, back in issue 5 of 86, gave it a 98%, which is pre those are pretty high scores. I mean, the game is pretty good. And when you were judging it for when it came out, it's a pretty uh, in-depth game, a lot of life simulator. If you're into simulation games, this game is uh, quite quite the one. It really does go in-depth. Um, there's a review in Computer Gaming World as well that uh, describes this game as a delightful, humorous, and thought-provoking exercise in decision-making, uh, value exploration and evaluation, and uh, vicarious wish fulfillment. Now, I mean, being Computer Gaming World, I don't know if it was the C64 version or maybe it was the DOS version that it was um, showing because there were a lot of ports of this game. There was an Apple II port, there was a PC port, there was a uh, Mac OS port, and there was a C64 version of the game. Now, when I hit continue here, we're going to go onto the screen and we're going to be in a warm, dark, comfortable place. This has been your place since you became aware that you are alive. It's almost time to enter a different world now. And we get to decide how we want to enter the world. We can try to stay in a little longer. We can come out peacefully or we can come out fighting, which is what we did last time. We're going to be doing it this time too. Because uh, we want to be, you know, a bit of a troublemaker maybe. Ouch! Those forceps are denting your skull. Is this any way to treat a star? A bundle of joy? Haven't you learned? You haven't learned to talk yet, so all you can do is yell until you are red in the face, which is everyone interprets as a good sign of good health. Yes, this is a strange, confusing world you've been brought into, so save your strength for the events to come. That's a little bit different. It can change up uh, every time you do that, I guess. Happy birthday and welcome to the world. From now on, life will begin to change rapidly. You will have to learn to accept responsibility, build your resources, manage yourself physically and emotionally. The events that transpire over the course of the next few days include, and this is sort of from the personality we built, uh, some of this stuff happens. Your mother is proud when someone points at you and tells you, or tells her, you look just like a little porcelain angel. Oh, we're pretty handsome. Your father buys you a baseball bat and glove uh, for use when you get a year or so, oh, in a year or so when you get older. You develop a mild respiratory infection that causes some concern, but no later problems. That's good. In this game, things that happen to you affect you for the rest of the game. There's various symbols here. Uh, this is our stats, so we can look at this, and you can see we're zero for your age, zero, occupation, none, and we're single. I don't know how we haven't managed to get in yet. We've got huge amounts of expressiveness, but our confidence and calmness are pretty low, as well as gentleness. We're not a very gentle person. Our familiar ties are uh, 66, but we're quite a happy person. Uh, our intelligence is average. Our social skills are pretty high. Our uh, vocational skills are about average, but everything else is a little bit below. Especially trustworthiness. I don't know how we haven't managed to be trustworthy yet, but that's all stuff we can build up through these various things. So this is a social development button. This is where sort of everybody's kind of crazy out there, and we've got to be the good person so that everyone doesn't hate us, but it seems like everybody seems to be trying to pick on us or kill us later in the game. But right now, a woman walks into the room holding a blanket and a warm a bottle with warm white liquid. Let's act happy and a coup at them. Well, what's going to happen? Nothing like a nice warm bottle and a quick hug from mom to get a kid ready to face the world. As she walks towards you with the bottle, she sees you smiling, interprets that as a sign that you want to play with her. Ah, see, this can be something else too. Um, depending on what happens here, it could be a salesman at the door that interrupts everything. And if you cry afterwards, mom's happy with you because you saved her from having to talk to the salesman. We're just going to keep making noises and hope that that gets her to feed us. Having to delay being fed is uncomfortable, but you are now beginning to learn how important human contact is for survival. Your overall stress level increases, but socially you score a big plus. All right. So I don't think there's time to go through every single one of these things in a given level. Uh, you have to kind of skip some of them sometimes, I think. I don't remember if that's actually the case. So we're just going to work our way through and see what happens. You don't have very many skills yet, but as a matter of fact, life is pretty boring. Well, that sounds pretty irritable. Let's go ahead and look around. 
What's going to happen? Ah, feel like you're going stir crazy? I can just imagine. The room is filled with bright colors, but you have trouble focusing on any of them. Let's uh, just keep looking around. We don't want to be a crybaby. You look around and see a large blur about 11 inches away from your eye. Somehow we know what an inch is, but we don't know what these blurs are. Every once in a while it moves. Hey, wait a minute. Just as you had that thought, it moved again. Let's keep looking. Congratulations, you found your hand! This may not seem like much of a big discovery, but it is. You will have to learn to control your hands as part of childhood development. When you are in adolescence, these hands are going to get you into quite a bit of trouble because of that. Or because that requires a different kind of hand control. <laughs> oh my. Game's already getting a little raunchy. You are lying on the floor of a big room, a soft furry, furry blanket. You are on your back, staring at shadows that sometimes creep across the ceiling. Every so often, Mom and Dad passes by and make a funny face. Your hands grope in all directions, and your feet pat the floor gently, almost out of your control. Let's be happy, and let's make an O shape with our mouth. You pucker your cheeks, cheeks in and out and take short, quick breaths. The skin of your face feels alternating, alternative, alternatingly tight and loose. A person walks by and twirls their fingers at you. Let's uh, move our face back and forth. I whip my face back and forth. Whip my face back and forth. <laughs> your first smile. An important event. Your parents stand over you, mesmerize as you practice your new skill. All right, so we've got... I mean, if we wanted to min-max things... You know, you can go through here and look at things and see how things are changing. Um, I don't remember exactly what our numbers were, but uh, I don't think these parts of the game affect it overly, other than you can do things like drink a bottle of chemicals and it will cause uh, health problems later in life. Lying on your stomach in the crib, you notice an interesting object an arm's distance away. It has a big round shape on top and a ring on the bottom. Let's get uh, our determination on and try to grasp that object. If you try to do things that don't make sense, um, the game will say, I don't know how to do this. Like You can be like, I'm super angry, but I do nothing. In real life, you can do that. In this game, normally not. You have the fighting spirit of your Uncle Bill. You sneak and crawl on your belly like a combat soldier heading into battle. You reach your destination and grasp the rattle confidently and drool on it in victory. Intelligent sphere shows a marked increase. Or intellectual sphere. Let's keep drooling on it! Yes, saliva is something that infants seem to have a never-ending supply of. Manufacturing will come in handy uh, when someone you don't like picks <laughs> you up and starts spinning you around over his head or face. Keep practicing. There's also a part later in the game where you can uh, spit up on your grandmother, and it literally just resets the story. Um, and you could indefinitely spit up on your grandmother. You are lying down in your crib. While mom and dad are speaking in the other room, you hear their voice deep and muffled from beyond the door. Why aren't they paying attention to you? Let's be sad and make noises. Because why aren't they paying attention to us? We're important. You begin to cry. This alarms your parents and is a negative way of attracting attention. Dad comes in holding a bottle of warm milk, which satisfies you temporarily. So apparently... We made ourselves a bit of a whiner, but that's okay. All right, so these ones here are family. This icon is um, events that happen between relatives and whatnot. And uh, your parents are normally trying to teach you something and you hopefully do well. These ones are actually um, intellectual development. So there's going to be a lot of those, I think, in this early stage. And the heart ones are emotional development. So let's go ahead and do this family ties thing and see if we can't uh, learn a little bit of a lesson. It's time to... Oh, this is the one where you can vomit on your grandmother. It's time to go to Lucy's house. Aunt Lucy's house. It's chilly outside and you need to be dressed in a coverall type suit. Um, let's be playful and resist. Uh, if you cooperate, that's when... Um, it's easy to vomit on your grandmother, but it just brings you back to this exact screen because they have to take you out of the suit and put you back in, and it doesn't affect anything. This may be the beginning of passive-aggressive personality trait. That means that you are displaying a hostile response disguised as something that doesn't appear outwardly or directly hostile. People will resent you for this. Your grandmother steps in to give you, your mother a hand. So we can do one of two things here. We can continue resisting 
and make ourselves late for the event, or we can uh, cooperate for Grandmother. Let's go ahead and cooperate for Grandmother, because perhaps she'll treat us extra nice later on. Grandma is called calm, unlike your mom, who is currently at her wit's end. You are learning early in life that no one can supply an endless amount of goodies that Grandma can. Your arms and legs pop out of the suit like first flowers of spring, which secretly annoys your mom, who feels incompetent. So, we've made our mom feel incompetent. That might not be a good thing for later on. Let's go ahead and develop it. our intellectual nature. You're exploring the playpen and are feeling very lively. Like a prize fighter, you grab hold of the playpen bars and shake back and forth, flexing your knees. All right, what are we going to be, deterring or determined? Let's be daring and take some steps. Oh boy, hopefully this works. You are facing the wrong way. You walk into the playpen and fall right on your back. Your head hits the mat with a loud thunk. This can get dangerous. Do you want to try again? Yes. Hopefully this doesn't just go right back to the very first part. The thrill of victory. You stumble across the crib like a punch-drunk sailor and firmly grasp the rail on the other side. You've taken your first steps. Soon you will be tripping the light, fantastic, chasing women and running away from spankings. All right, let's keep this intelligence trait uh, going up. You're sitting in your high chair eating your lunch, which consists of crackers, strained peas, and a mug of milk. When You, uh, you are just learning how to eat with utensils. Let's get curious and try to use the spoon. What's going to happen? So, I mean, this is a pretty interesting game. I'm probably going to play this game all the way through. In this video, we're going to go about half an hour into the game, I think, before we decide to call it a video there for the C64 Sunday special. But I'll post more videos later in the week as things progress. First, you put the back end of the spoon in your mouth. You then lift the cup with both hands and try blowing through the spoon as if it were the straw. As if it were the straw. Nothing happens. This is the same thing that happens if you play with the cup, the, the cup instead of the spoon. Curiosity and persistence are early signs of inventive personality. One day during late childhood, you may find yourself attempting to rewire electric, the electric hairdryer and have a shocking experience. For now, you... Um... Stir the milk rapidly with the spoon. We're not going to be overly uh, trying to be a jerk about this. It makes bubbles. It bounces out of the tin, up out of the cup, and hits you in the face. It causes the cup to fly off the tray and spill all over the floor. This is great. Your mother fails to understand the true significance of your discoveries, but acts surprisingly tolerant. All right, let's keep going. See what sort of kid we can become. I want to get to that uh, one on the top left. It's one of the medical ones or rather physical development. Uh, often you can hurt yourself in those. We'll try not to. Mom, dad, or entertain some friends, and you are minding your own business, sitting quietly in a corner when, of the room, when suddenly a man with a big nose and a shiny head puts his face right up to yours and says something in a loud voice. Let's be calm and hit the man in the nose. See, this is the example of that. Maybe we aren't perturbed by his yelling, but we just want to get him out of here. So let's... Um, Let's act in anger and hit the man in the... No. Let's act in terror and hit the man on the nose. Bam! You give, him, give it to him right in the snozz, which feels rough and oily. You are terrified, and he thinks you are playing with him. Fortunately, your dad spots him and ushers him back to bother other people closer to his own age. At least we stood up for ourselves there, instead of relying on our parents. All right, we still got quite a ways to go here. Let's uh, socialize it up. No, I didn't want to go that low. I guess the middle two are the only two you can uh, select and going up and down moves it around. While being taken to the part, your dad meets an old college buddy who is wheeling a baby about your age. As the two dads talk, you casually begin to eye the other baby in the other carriage. Let's get curious and put our finger near the other baby's face. Oh, I don't want to review. All right. So there's not a lot of sound effects going on in this game. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Every once in a while it goes, ding. Let's turn this up just in case. Uh, when we select it, we're going to touch the baby's arm. I don't. Th I think touching someone's face is a little bit forward, even for a baby. The baby touches you back. You are exploring the environment and learning about one another. This causes your intellectual and social spheres to increase. You seem to like one another. You've made your first friend. All right. 
So we are not a loner loser anymore. Let's go ahead and try this health thing out. Or this physical development. You are alone in the kitchen and begin to explore the closets and refrigerators. Okay, this is where we're going to be adventurous and we're going to go to the refrigerator. We don't want to go to the pantry because we might accidentally drink something poisonous. You wonder if you're strong enough to open the refrigerator. You pull the door, uh, the long handle, and the door swings open, hitting you in the head. This produces nasty swelling. Let's ignore the pain and continue exploring. It's fun. Let's see. Ouch, that really hurts. But look at all the smooth jars and shiny bottles. There are several delicious looking things within reach on the bottom shelf. A full can of whipped cream, a jar of red cherries, a jar of mayonnaise, a bottle of red hot chili sauce. Which would you like to taste? Now, I've done the cherries before, and your mom just comes in and kind of scolds you because you eat so much of it, you get sick. I'm going to try the hot sauce because I don't think we could eat enough of it to get sick. But hey, it's going to teach us that hot foods are delicious. The thin bottle of sauce fits in your hand, small hand perfectly. Small amounts of liquid can squirt from the tiny hole at the top of the bottle. You squirt a few drops in your mouth, a little tangy, but not bad. You suck down the contents of the bottle. This is a big mistake. Your stomach feels queasy. You call for mom who gets very nervous and calls the doctor for advice. You will be okay, but your physical fear takes a nasty turn for the worse. That is not what would happen. Oh man, lame. I don't think a kid could chug a whole bottle of that hot sauce without realizing it's spicy. You were touching something smooth and shiny. You pat it with your hands a few times. Let's be confused and keep touching. <laughs> it's a flat, it's flat and a little cool. Wait a minute. There's a baby in there. Who is that baby? It's maybe it's us. That's right. You were looking at yourself in a mirror. What you that not that a beautiful baby? Ah, see, this is where we get to be confident. And our confidence is lacking, so we're gonna say yes. You really are quite stunning. You're developing a positive self-image. There we go. That's a good thing. Things weren't going so well for us. How much further do we have in this? Oh man, there's so much stuff to do here. There we go. That's where you get to the end. Okay, we don't want to go all the way up there though. We are currently, we can look at the time. We're currently two years and eight months old, which is going to be pretty dumb with some of this stuff because they keep treating you like a baby, even though, and this is where I think maybe they expect you to only do one of the paths at a time because you start doing things where they're like treating you like an infant as opposed to a three-year-old. It is announced that uh, during a heart-to-heart -heart talk, it is time for you to give up the bottle and drink from the glass like a big boy. From a glass like a big boy. Let's be disappointed, but willing to try and give up the bottle. Apparently you can be disappointed and willing to try, but refuse. It's probably one of those things where it says it's confused. Mom understands how difficult an effort is, uh, how difficult it is to let go of an old friend and appreciates your effort. She has a box for you. Let's open the box because we weren't really that upset. Oh boy, it's a plastic Super Duck drinking cup with a bendable straw. Look at this! It even has your name on it. Mom tells you that Super Duck wrote it there himself. Mom is laying it on a little bit thick at the moment. Alright, so that's, uh, we have a new prize possession, I suppose. You are at the guest of, uh, your friend Billy's house. His mom gives you both a box of crayons and a piece of paper. Let's be impulsive, but draw on the paper. You do uh, some impressionistic drawings as opposed to trying to make people look realistic. You scribble back and forth wildly, creating bold slashes of color. When you're finished, you can crumple it up and start again or save it. Let's, uh, let's crumple it up and start again. Ah, yes, the frustrated artist. Your impulsiveness combined with your desire for perfection keeps you in a state of artistic turmoil. Hmm, interesting. All right, here's another social event. What's going to happen? You in a large department... Blah, blah, blah. I'm having heart, trouble talking. You are in a large department store, waiting in line, and there is an ex extremely well-endowed woman standing in front of you. She smiles. It looks like she may be interesting, an interesting person to talk to. Let's be inquisitive and ask her some questions. Which questions would you like to ask her? Oh, do you have a husband? Do you have a doggy? Mommy said daddy has a thick skull. Do you? <laughs> I tried very hard to pinch a penny like Aunt Edna, but couldn't. Can you? Um, Let's ask if they have a husband. Maybe we're already on our track to be a lady killer. She tells you that she does have a husband. 
That's too bad. That's not interesting at all. Oh well. Uh, our intellectual development is pretty good. I kind of want to just, well, I don't want to, I'm going to skip a couple things because I'm pretty sure you can go back to them if you want to, just so that, uh, in case we don't make it too far along. It's Saturday morning. Dad comes and asks you to help with some chores. The Super Duck cartoon hour has just begun. Let's be cranky and go outside and help. You go outside reluctantly and mope around. You move around a lot and touch things that you shouldn't. Dad gets impatient trying to watch you and do work at the same time. So he sends you back into the house. Well... I'm sure that has some negative connotations later on, but we seem to have gotten away with not having to do our chores. Dad says it's time to go to bed. Okay, we gave Dad a hard time last time. Let's uh, go ahead and ask to stay up a while longer, but we'll act tired. We won't get cranky at him this time. We know we gave him a hard time during the day. Dad explains how tired you are and what a busy day it will be tomorrow. The same old line. He offers to carry you. When you get to the bedroom, you can... Ask him to tell you a story or ask for Nicole. Let's ask him to tell us a story. That seems more interactive. You are so tired that the murmur of words puts you right to sleep. You don't even remember what the story was about. Ah, see, I played this earlier in testing, and when I did this exact same setup, Dad told us a story about a monster toad that liked to eat the toes of little boys. Then when you fall asleep, he goes, roar and nibbles on your toes, but you were just pretending to be asleep and you um, instead surprise him by roaring at him and trying to get him instead. You both laugh and he tells you he loves you. We didn't get that with our father this time. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I guess we're going back here. You were sitting in a large place. A furry man walks up to you. He's walking around you in circles. We are curious and we're going to make noises at the furry man. I guess it depends on how early you come up here. If it's weak. You yell out to the free man, he walks over to you. He makes a noise that sounds like this. Roof. He then sits on your leg. Let's grab the free man by the head. You grab his head between your two hands. Hey! Now that man is licking you all over the face. Mommy says he's giving kisses to you. Let's lick him in the face and see how he likes it. His nose is cold and the hair tickles your face. He tastes very salty and has bad breath. I guess we have a pet dog now. All right, we're getting there. Uh, let's socialize it up. I don't really like how that dad thing turned out, though. I was hoping to get the uh, cool dad thing. You're playing in the sandbox with your favorite toy. A larger child, the longer stranger child, pulls it away from you and screams, Mine. Oh, we're going to get angry. We're going to... Uh, Let's uh, let's just grab it back. Last time I got an adult, this time I'm going to grab it back. The child seems much stronger than you. He puts three fingers in your mouth and tries to push you away. He is holding the metal toy above your head. Let's try to bite him. Crash! The metal toy comes down right on your head. Crash again! Crash again! You are beginning to feel dizzy. You cry out, crash, crash! He finally stops, but your head and face are covered with blood. Uh, he must you must have been playing with one of the early metal transformer toys. That's why they're made of plastic now. His mother takes him away before either one of your parents can tell what happened. He is a problem child with very aggressive tendencies. He's done this to other children too. You were treated unfairly. Ah, uh, see if you get a parent you get your toy back. Hmm, interesting. That did not go well for us. We should not try to take on dogs too big for us. Time to feed the fish. You pinch a small amount of fish food between your fingers and tap the glass. There's no sign of Gabriella. Let's become confused and look for Gabriella. What's going to happen here? Is our fish okay? You put your hand in the fish tank and look for Gabriella. She's stuck under a rock. She is stiff and her eyes are puffed out. You think that she might be sick. Let's um call for mom. We don't know what's wrong with the fish. Gabriella folds to the surface from under a big gray rock. Her eyes seem very puffy and her body is stiff. You're relieved to see she hasn't jumped out of the bowl. Let's ask mom about Gabby. Mom stutters through the answers to your questions. She is uncomfortable and sad. Mom explains that Gabby can't swim anymore. 
Mom says she's dead and that she's gone away. How can that be? She's right there. What is dead, you wonder? You are confused and Mom says that Gabby has to be taken out of the bowl. And so we are given the choice now. The choice to flush Gabby down the toilet or keep her in a box in our drawer. I don't want to fish stink it up my bedroom. So we're going to flush it down the toilet. Even though Mom has a sad face, you giggle at the thought of Gabby swimming in the bowl. You wonder if she will tickle you the next time you go to the bathroom. He. It isn't a real laugh. But you don't know what else to do. Now, kids, you don't understand anything. I think we're going to work our way through this uh, last little bit here, and that'll be that, because the video is already... Oh, it's already over 30 minutes long. You are eating at the house of one of your friends, uh, parents' friends. You were told by your mother to be on your best behavior. Something you ate has disagreed with you, and you feel very sick. Well, our only mood is squeezy. We can ignore it, throw it up, and get it over with. Call mom, try to find the bathroom yourself. We'll talk to mom, because that is the best behavior. Under thy parents, I suppose. Oh, oh Mom puts you off for a bit. You can't say you didn't try to warn her. Your stomach rumbles. Black. You throw up all over everything. Mom is angry at herself and embarrassed. Well, we've embarrassed our mom yet again, but this time it was her own damn fault. How's this family uh, tie is going to go this time? You're still not completely with uh, familiar with using the toilet. I thought this was family. It is family. Um, it's still quite fascinating to you, and you've just finished... Uh, you've just finished and cleaned yourself like a big boy. Let's be playful and curious and leave the bathroom. Oh, apparently we can't do that. All right, well, let's just be content with what we've done and leave the bathroom. Uh, I don't want to mess around with the toilet. All right, you have resisted a strong temptation. You deserve a cookie. There are some on the table over there. Would you like to take one? I think that... That's sort of a hint that resisting the temptation was a good thing, and we should resist it again. Boy, you are a hard one to fool. You seem to be growing up to be a real goody two-shoes. We'll see how good you are at remaining this way when somebody offers you your first drink of alcohol when you are still underage. Heh <laughs> we will. I mean, if you play your cards right, I'm pretty sure you can end up uh, <laughs> being a rock star in this game and doing drugs and all sorts of stuff. Um... Let's take care of this last physical thing, and then we'll save the game for later. The phone rings while well, Daddy's irony is sure. Mm, he must uh, leave you alone in the room. All right, what are we going to do? Uh, let's be helpful and play quietly. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Here's the thing. I was cautious and played quietly before, and I got burned. And I'm curious if it's going to happen again. Because before, like when we fell asleep, uh, things were fine. Dad realizes, oh no, see it happened again. Dad realizes you are alone with the hot iron and calls you into, his, uh, into him. You run into the room and trip over the iron cord. You fall to the floor and the hot iron lands on your ar hands and arm. It hurts a lot and you were taken to the hospital. You suffer second-degree burns on your hands and arms, and you are bandaged to the elbow on both sides. You will have some permanent scarring. I don't know for sure if... I mean, there's no way helping is going to be a good thing. You're a freaking kid. I think that might be one of those... Uh, you're kind of SOL, whether you uh, do good or not. So we're currently three years and nine months old. We're going to call it a video here. Um, that's the end of the C64 Sunday part of this video. However, I will be posting more videos of this uh, game during the week if you wish to see how young Zerf progresses in life and what he ends up um, doing as an adult. And if he actually survives through to go uh, quietly into the sweet night. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on another C64 Sunday.